planning to do is to put is to give Machu the Pikachu a life. Congrats to 1 in 256 miss for on the token. You got it back. So next we have our metronome token match. On the blue team we have Vigoroth, the Viper, and Meow. And on the red team we have Pytoad, Magmar, and Macho. Well, as is the case with all Yolo No matches, it's gonna be it's gonna be a battle of who can use Metronome better. The more Yolo Nomes you get, the more you win stuff. Yeah. So Meowth has a Chuffle Berry, which means that any fighting type attack that hits it, um, the damage will be cut in half. Of course, once the berry is used up, uh, it won't take effect anymore. Vigoroth has a roll at berry, which means that, um, it will damage any opponent that hits it with a special attack. It's very useful to get a little bit of chip damage from that berry off. Meanwhile, everyone in the chat is hog champing at what Simbot is. The commentators are Mozilla Fennekin and Joyce Wilson Free Free. I'm Joyce. And so the metronome match begins. Blue is surprisingly the underdog here. Yeah, interesting. Meowth is usually the uh, most favorable Yolanomon. And also so, we have some Undertale music. Yeah, everyone's putting their hopes and dreams on the line. They're gonna put them all into this metronome right here. Right here. Turns out to be a Bigger pain split. With an untactical pain split. Damage mattered. This is quite a powerful return. Oh, I must love its trainer a lot. That's that's nice. We can't let that Polito down. Big Ralph sharpens something, and it gets an attack boost there. And Polito's gonna do the same, but this time with a howl. No fun allowed, sorry guys. Pytoad uses Prison, and the Prison explodes, dealing a lot of damage. That might have been the most powerful possible Prison, because that was quite a lot of damage. 
Oh, too weak to make a substitute. That's unfortunate. Well, Blue's gonna have a nightmare if they don't end up winning this match. Torn up by Spatial Red! Ouch. Uh oh. Polito loses almost all of its HP but maximizes that attack stat, so any attack that's coming out of the physical side is probably going to take out this Vigoroth. But not if Vigoroth takes it out first. And a super effective ball tackle takes Polito down. That body juggles for nothing. Not like this. So Magmar is sent out on the red team. Magmar is actually quite good at Metronome as well, because it is very fast. Faster even than Meow. However, in this case, the speed works to its disadvantage. Metal Burst doesn't work if you move before the opponent attacks you. Vigoroth sends a nice greeting card over to Magmar. Doesn't take it very lightly. And Aqua Tail is going to take out that Vigoroth. A magma using Aqua Tail, that's a pretty nice animation. Does it put out its own tail fire as well? I would I would love to see fan art of Magma using Aqua Tail. That would probably look really cool. Nightmare. More nightmare is threatening to break the blue team. Yeah. And Snek is gonna grow even bigger and gonna raise its special attack stat. Not sure what secret power turns into here, but it deals some decent damage. Oh, so Viper <laughs> transforms into the Steel type. That gives us lots of resistances, but Magma uses fire or fighting a ground move, so it'll be super effective. Toxic Spike's not good for the blue team. Lazy snake, oh, trying to snore but failing. Set of flame by sacred fire, that conversion two really did not pay off the blue. Meowth is gonna be poisoned as soon as she is sent out. Yeah, unless Meowth can get off a rest or a refresh, it's probably not gonna last very long. Oh, a few turns too early with that endeavor. Not much happened this turn. Magmar's going to compliment Meowth for getting so far into the battle and fighting wild poison, so he's an inspiration, fighting with the sickness. So Meowth is now both poisoned and confused. 
It's not going to last very long. Like more flails around deals some light damage to the Meowth. The best fly move with no drawback? Uh in generation four it's probably fly or draw pike. Fly is stronger, but its accuracy is slightly less. I would say drill pack. After that I think acrobatics. Yeah, acrobatics is better than either of them, but it's not in PPR, so... Yeah, unfortunately. Well, this might be the last turn for me out. It needs to do something right here if it wants to get take home a payout. Oh, Magma also uses conversion too. This is hilarious. Another conversion. It transforms into the rock. It's a conversion two two. The conversion two two two. Great attack from the clamp there, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough to take home a win. And Adanis and Poison finished it. Rip cool congratulations, cat. Congratulations, Red Team. Yeah, congratulations on your 81% payout. And it's just like we said, the blue team's going to have a lot of nightmares. Red Team predicted it. And here we're back at the side game. I'm kind of liking all these anime emotes that we have, really weaving the place up, and I'm proud. Congratulations to 0000 map on your token. So the next match is a random order match. We're switching off. On the red team, we have Ninkata, Moltres, and Xcloud. And on the blue team, we have Shaman, Pupitar, and Vagon. Not a great matchup for Shaman. It's definitely, at best, it will want to face the Explow, but I don't think it will want to fight Ninkata or Moltres. Ninkata has a stall set. It has Toxic, Protect, and Dig to uh, stall the poison damage. And it also has x for some good damage. Yeah, I can get some nice juicy critical hits. And Ninkata's its Compound Eyes ability increases its accuracy, so it'll almost guarantee Toxic hitting. I think it is guaranteed toxic hit because it's 90% accurate and then compound eyes boosts it by 30%. Yep. Both Moltres not... and Shaman has some pretty strong attacks, but Shaman, as mentioned, is not going to do very well against the Moltres. Yeah, that's right.
And then Kata's not going to want to fight Pupitar though, because uh, Pupitar has shed skin to remove all that toxic damage. And then it can curse rest it to stall out Dig. It's a pretty powerful set. I think only x can really deal with that. Five seconds left. Uh, for now, blue team is a huge underdog. Welcome to the gun show, boys. And so the battle begins, the odds have flipped, and right now red team is on the dog instead of blue team. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah, they got completely reversed for both teams. And so in the beginning we have Fagon against x -Cloud. In other words, not good for Shaman. Leon gets a powerful Dragon Rush right off the bat, but doesn't get the flinch, so x is going to Hyper Voice it. Hyper Voice deals more than half damage. Fagon manages to hit a second Dragon Rush. Good roll or flinch? Mm, possibly? Nope. So Pupitar will be out next for the blue team. They're going for some curse strategy. Pupitar gets some payback for its teammate, taking out that explode right away. For small trace out next, it is Pupitar's time to shine. Moltres gets sliced by Stone Edge and taken down. Massive damage. This actually might have been the best order for Blue because it, Pupitar wanted to take on a weakened Exploud and then Moltres can't do anything to it, so... If Blue Team plays this outright, they could probably just stall out Mankata completely. So when Nankata uses Dig, while wow, Pupitar uses Curse. And Shed Skin leaves it from the poison. So Nankata might want to get a critical hit Dig, that might be its only chance. It does not get a critical hit, and Pupitar uses Payback. Whoa, there's a crit! Oh, that completely changes things. That did probably a lot more than Blue expected. It did a lot more yep. than I thought.
So now Shaman's going to have to deal with this Nikata, but the battle's not lost for them. Oh, X Desert did very little damage. This Shaman is quite defensive. And oh, Nikata ripped into by Thief Player. Congratulations to the team you played well. But I just get pumped, homies! TPP. Nice sim bot quote. TP, TPP sim flexing some testosterone over there. <laughs> 